Welcome to the Friary Garden here in the Convento di Cappuccini, San Giovanni Rotondo, the Friary of San Giovanni Rotondo. Very excited to be here actually uh, in this garden. Now I have been here before, but perhaps not so deeply into the garden. Um, because naturally enough, the monastery, the Friary, if you like, has extended and expanded over the years because the only show in town is Padre Pio. Um, and it has grown, the Convento. That's what they call a Capuchin friary in Italy, Convento di Cappuccini. So if I say Convento, just understand that that's the, the, the local Italian uh, terminology. But the, the friary has grown, as I said, because of Padre Pio. Now, visiting friars have come, uh, priests and friars have come because in the summertime when the pilgrims uh, are, are kind of here en masse, you know, there's confessions heard, there's ministry, there's masses said. So, uh, Friary kind of stole a lot of the garden, but they still have this beautiful walkway and these old trees. And I spotted this uh, gorgeous grotto to the Archangel St. Michael. It's interesting, we're going as a group today to the uh, cave of St. Michael, uh, Monte Sant'Angelo, the cave of the Archangel Michael. And you know, Padre Pio, of course, had such a lively devotion to St. Michael the Archangel, the Archangel who protects us from evil. But let's just take a little stroll down the garden, shall we? Um, Padre Pio walked on these uh, stones, on this uh, dry grass. Padre Pio would have come out here uh, in the late afternoon for a stroll, for a walk with his rosary beads, saying one of his many, many rosary beads uh, in uh, the day. and. Um, I'd like to think that Padre Pio uh, got some downtime when he walked along here. That this was a, a sort of a, a place, a haven for him, somewhere where he could be, you know, by himself with the Lord. Um, go back into the friary there, and straight away he's back into um, busyness, back into encounters with people, which he loved, back into ministry, back into work. But here in the garden, this lovely rustic garden. I, I, I can almost sort of see, uh, uh, you know, him standing at a tree, contemplating you know, a prayer or, 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 a, or an intention, contemplating maybe perhaps, uh, you know, um, a petition for one of his spiritual children. And I also like to think that he is kind of walking in the footsteps of Francis of Assisi. We said before that Francesco Forgione, that was his name, the name that his mom and dad gave to him, and Francesco di Bernardone, Francis of Assisi, I, I said before that they were interlinked, even though they lived seven centuries apart, they were interlinked because of their stigmata, because of their Italian heritage, and because of the fact that they were part of the family of Francis, the family that Francis of Assisi founded. But here in the garden, I can't help also noticing the connections of Mother Earth. We are in a time of great uh, crisis for the world in which we live, the world around us, our common home. Pope Francis has just published a, another, if you like, document to complement Laudato Si, his groundbreaking encyclical from a few years ago. This document, Laus Deo, Laudatum Deo, um, again, really trying to call on the people of goodwill to protect the earth, to protect the environment, to protect our, as Francis of Assisi would call it, our sister Mother Earth. I've no doubt when, 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 when Padre Pio uh, came for a walk in the garden, he plugged into nature. Like if, we, if we listen for a second, we'll hear the, the, the birds in the trees, I hope. Sometimes you can't switch them on when you want them to come on. <laughs> but there they go again. They, they, they're, they're singing and uh, I can see them flying around. We're in late autumn, of course, so, uh, you know, it, 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 I don't think the swallows are, are here. I think they've, they've headed back to North Africa. But I, I really do like to kind of imagine Padre Pio, you know, tuning in to, to the world around him, tuning into the world of nature and praising God in all creation. I, I still remember, you know, learning for the first time the Canticle of Brother Son, all praise be you, my Lord, through all your creatures, especially my Lord, Sir Brother Son, who is the day, 
you know, all, all praise be you, my Lord, through our sister moon and the stars. All praise be you, my Lord, through our uh, sister water, so pure and useful and chaste and precious. All praise be you, my Lord, through brother fire. He is playful and robust and strong. Francis of Assisi writing in that canticle a praise of all creation because it was created by God. So, you know, Padre Pio coming around this garden here in this beautiful kind of late morning sunshine, um, seeing and hearing the sounds and seeing, you know, the, the, the world around him, just getting a moment of downtime in a busy world. I think Francis of Assisi would be very proud of that. Um, life wasn't so sophisticated in Francis of Assisi's time, so they had no choice in a way but to kind of uh, go out into nature. I think uh, Francis was asked a question one time, um, where is your cloister? And he pointed out into the distance, he said, here is my cloister. In other words, uh, the friars don't have um, an appropriation to physical buildings. We, we do have friaries, of course, but you know, we're not attached to them. That's why you hear about Capuchins and friars being moved from place to place. It's part of our call. So, you know, the world out there is where we're called to be inserted into. Uh, in a sense. And I think Padre Pio, um, in his life, understood that in many, many ways. So many people came to him and connected with him and asked him for prayers and asked him for intercession. So, you know, Padre Pio was summoned, there's the birds now, they start when, <laughs> they start when, I'm, when, I'm, uh, when I'm not expecting it, you know. But I really, really love this place. I really, there's even a St. Bernard, a pet St. Bernard dog was over there kind of wondering who we are. Who are these people? Who are these strangers? But uh, it's really, really lovely um, to come into the Friary Garden, to the place where Padre Pio walked each day, to connect with our sister Mother Earth. In our prayer, let us pray, echoing the words of Pope Francis, that we care for our common home, that we look after the world around us, because it's a vulnerable world uh, it's all we've got. Uh, we need to mind it, we need to protect it because it's made in God's image and likeness. And it's made so that we can, each of us, uh, enjoy and benefit from its bounty. Let's, let's enjoy and benefit from the world's bounty in a sustainable way, in a respectful way, you know, in a sober way, um, in a gentle way. We also pray for peace with so much um, pain and suffering in the Middle East. Uh, we pray for peace. We pray for diplomacy to triumph. We pray that uh, non-violence will be uh, brought to the fore. Uh, we pray especially for all who have been killed and injured. We pray for all who have been hurt. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord show his face to you and be gracious to you. May the Lord raise his countenance and give you his peace. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.